In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, after just finishing the reading of the Passion of Jesus from St. Matthew's Gospel, we wish, I'm sure all of us deep in our hearts, we wish to echo the words of St. Paul, which were in the epistle today. He said, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those that are in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that the Lord Jesus Christ is in the glory of God the Father. For us, as we bend our knee, our hearts, our souls low, we ask God, we ask him sincerely to break our prideful, self-centered, sin-loving hearts like we broke his sacred heart as we remember in the Passion. We ask our Lord to break our hearts and to remake them anew in his image. In our liturgy today, the church combines both Palm Sunday and Good Friday to teach us a valuable lesson. As our Lord was approaching Jerusalem, we remember how he mounted a donkey and its colt, making his royal entrance to claim his city, Jerusalem, in the most humble of ways, not riding in as a king on a stallion or something like that, but on a lowly donkey. The people then paved the way with palm branches, as was a customary way in the ancient world to welcome a king back to his home. And so they welcomed Christ, who they saw as a king coming home. The palm branches are also, they are also a symbol for victory. Already the people believed that Christ would be victorious. And so they lay the palm branches and they cry out, Hosanna, which means save us. But we all know what had happened. Some of these jubilant, confident well-wishers would soon join another crowd, also very uh, boisterous, yelling out, yelling out at the top of their lungs, crucify him. The palm branches that we hold and take home today remind us of the shameful state of those who in one moment honor Christ and in another, crucify him. Today, we reenacted Christ's, Christ's procession into Jerusalem by ourselves carrying palm branches in our own procession as we went outside the church, around, and then to the main doors of the church. You may have noticed, you maybe were a little surprised as we came to the main doors that they were shut they were shut and we had to wait quite a while outside. You may have noticed that our scola, our singers, kept on going. They still had hope something good was going to happen, even though we were locked out of the church. The door was shut. There is great and deep symbolism at work in the closing of the main doors. For us, as we looked at those doors, we were to remember the fall of Adam and Eve, as they were banished from paradise, the gates to heaven were locked shut and an angel was put in charge to guard those gates, not to let anyone pass by. And indeed, that has been the state of the world leading up to Christ. The gates to, uh, to, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the gates to heaven, were locked firmly shut. The church is a symbol of heaven, we, or sorry, the church is a symbol of heaven, the doors is the gates of heaven, and we on the other side, praying, looking at those gates, hoping for the day when Christ would come to open them. Finally, the scola began singing, Gloria laus et honor, tibi sit rex Christe redemptor, glory, praise, and honor to Christ, the King and Redeemer. We uh, were listening, and finally, as they finished this prayer, this prayer to Christ our Redeemer, the priest takes the processional cross, and this is very important. He doesn't just grab the door and open it. It's locked shut. You can't open it. I can't open it, the gate to heaven. But rather, he takes the, the processional cross with, uh, with our Lord Jesus crucified on the top, and there with the bottom, he knocks the door three times. 
And this symbolism is to remind us that it's the blood of Christ that unlocks, unlocks uh, the, the gates to heaven. And after knocking those big gates, those doors, they are opened and we are allowed to enter into heaven. We are allowed to enter into paradise to come into the church. As we came into the church, we continued carrying our palm branches. There's more symbolism of these branches than just Christ's victory, hope in his victory. These branches also symbolize for us our Lenten penances, all that we've done during these, these 40 days of preparation for the passion and resurrection of Christ, our fasting, our self-denial, um, uh, the, uh, the different mortifications, the things that we have done and denied ourselves, our extra prayers, all of these we've built up and they are an offering that we can then come and bring into the church to place right there with the crucified Christ. We can imagine, again, imagine as you're walking in these gates into the church, that maybe at the gates of heaven, there's an angel there that is watching to make sure that you have a palm branch. If you don't have a palm branch, you can't get in. He will come and he will make you leave. Um, the palm branch, of course, means more than just the branch. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of a repentant heart. It's a symbol of someone who has repented deep in their heart of their sins, has true sorrow, and, and through their penances then has opened wide their hearts to the grace of God so they can truly receive his grace, that saving grace which gives us entry into the promised land. Our Lord gives a strong warning just before, just before he finally makes it up to Jerusalem to come into the city. You may remember this well. As he's on his way, he notices a fig tree, which is barren. Lots of leaves, but no fruit. And it says that our Lord curses the fig tree. He says, may no fruit ever come from you again. And then to the surprise of the apostles, they see that the fig tree, it says, and the fig tree withered at once. The fig tree immediately withered up and died. For us, too, a strong warning, if we do not bear fruit worthy of repentance, if we, uh, if we are not making penance ourselves, in order to stretch our hearts big and wide, opening them to God's grace and presence, then we, too, may shrivel up, wither away, and never be able to enter that blessed place, that heavenly Jerusalem. And so as you take your palm branch home, I encourage you, if you can, put it behind a crucifix in your home and let it be a sign for you of what we have experienced today. Let it remind you of the hope that we have in the victory of Christ for sure. Hosanna, save us, O Lord, we believe. But also let it be a sign and reminder to you of these 40 days of your penances, of your joyful sufferings, of what it is that you come to bring to Christ, to place along there with him as, uh, as he offers himself on the cross, his sacrificial act, and we try to add what we can of our sacrificial acts. And, and, and as we do this, as we do this, we have the hope that Christ can transform our hearts, our minds, our souls, that he can penetrate all of them deeply with his saving grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, 